Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In this video, I'll introduce, explain, and give examples of polyatomic ions. Let's first remind ourselves what ions actually are again. We've been describing them so far as atoms that have lost or gained electrons and therefore have a charge, like sodium and bromine, where an electron transfers and sodium gets a plus one charge. Now it's considered a sodium ion, and the bromine gets a negative one charge. Now it's considered a bromine ion. What we've left out of this description is that these ions are really just one type of ion called a monatomic ion, which means that they're composed of just one atom. This prefix mono is always going to tell you that there's one of something. In this case, for these ions, they're each made of only one atom. But monatomic ions aren't the only type that exist. There's also polyatomic ions, which are ions that are composed of many different atoms. The prefix poly generally tells you that you're going to be talking about more than one of something. So what exactly does a polyatomic ion look like, and how can an ion be made of many atoms in the first place? Well, here's a good example of one. You can see there's a yellow sulfur atom in the middle, and it's surrounded and bound to four other oxygen atoms. That's the many atoms part. Together, all five of these atoms collectively act as one ion with a minus two charge. When you're writing a formula for one of these large polyatomic ions, you have to include subscripts to indicate how many of each atom there is, just like always. So for this particular ion, it would be SO4 because there's one sulfur and four oxygens. The charge would also be written in the upper right-hand corner, just like normal. Here's another example, this time with a nitrogen atom in the middle, surrounded and bound to three other oxygen atoms all acting together, with a minus one charge. The formula for this would be NO3 minus one. And here's just one more example. This is a phosphorus atom surrounded by four oxygens, all with a minus three charge. The formula would of course be PO4 minus three. Now you might notice that all of these examples have negative charges, they're all anions. And that's true for most polyatomic ions, but it's worth mentioning that some can be positive too. This particular example is an NH4, and it has a positive one charge. Now let's talk about what to call these big giant polyatomic ions, starting by remembering how monatomic ions are named by changing the normal ending to I. For example, if you had a sulfur with a minus two, you wouldn't call it sulfur. You drop the ending and change it to I, making this a sulfide ion. A similar thing happens with our polyatomic ions. Take SO4, for example. Because it contains a sulfur atom, just like the sulfide, we're going to use that same S-U-L-F, sulf, prefix. We just can't call it sulfide. Generally, polyatomic ions are given the ending 8, so SO4 minus 2 is called sulfate. Here that is again with nitrogen. Remember, N minus 3 is just monatomic. It's one atom. So you wouldn't call it nitrogen. You drop the ending and call it nitride. If you take a polyatomic ion that also contains nitrogen, we would probably call it nitrate. And as you can probably now guess, our PO4 minus 3 would be called phosphate. There are, of course, other polyatomic ions out there, and they don't all have 8 as an ending. In fact, if you took these three polyatomic ions but removed one oxygen from each, so instead of SO4, we have SO3. This is a different polyatomic ion, and its name changes to sulfite, I-T-E, instead of sulfate. And a similar pattern happens with the other two. NO2 minus 1, because it has one less oxygen, is called nitrite, and PO3, instead of phosphate, is called phosphite. The most important thing to notice here is that these polyatomic ions typically have names that end in 8 or it, although you will see a couple other examples that are exceptions to this. We'll wrap up the video by answering the question, how many polyatomic ions are there? We've talked about six so far, but in the real world, there's tons of these things. Most chemistry teachers will provide you with a table like this that lists a whole bunch of polyatomic ions with their charges and their names that you can use as a reference. If you don't have one, you can always quickly do a Google search and find one to use on your own. That concludes this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Here's a brief summary.